You're listening to the Infinite Banking Mastery Podcast. Did you know that you could build a tax-free pool of wealth that's liquid and accessible all your life while building your retirement nest egg? Gain full control of your financial future and stop relying on the government and banks. The wealthy have already discovered this wealth building secret. Now it's your turn to get financially secure without following the conventional wisdom that keeps you in debt to banks. Now here's your host, Valerie LaRoque. Hello everyone, happy Independence Day. I hope that today you are finding a special way to enjoy and celebrate freedom. And I thought that today I would rerun one of my first episodes that I think is very important. This episode, Two Ways to Build Tax-Free Wealth, talks about the problem and tax risks lying ahead, and also how there's really only two places to protect your savings from future unknown tax rates. Imagine putting dollars away right now for your retirement years and having no idea what your tax rate will be at the future time, or at that future time when you need your funds, and it ends up being double your tax rate today. Hey, government, go ahead and take twice as much. Mm, No, thank you. Well, unfortunately, this is a very real risk, and we have no idea what our tax rate will be in the future. Oh, and I figure I should mention that when I recorded this episode a year and a half ago, the deficit was just under $32 trillion, and now it's just under $35 trillion. Absolutely unacceptable. Enjoy the episode. On my last episode, I had ended with the question, where do you store your cash? As we were discussing the giant need our government has to bring in more revenue. I went over a high level and very dreary look of our nation's financial situation, sharing how we as a country are spending more than we are bringing in by a lot and just amassing this very huge debt that we are all aware of, the $31 trillion in growing that we currently owe as a nation. And then even more scary, when we look into the future at our unfunded liabilities and the debt that every one of us owes at over $173 trillion. So today, I want to shed some more light on this by going into our tax history and then sharing some light at the end of the tunnel by sharing some ways to protect yourself from what David Walker, ex-CPA of the USA, says is inevitable to happen. And if you missed the last episode, I'm referring to a statement on how our future tax rate will need to double or our country could go bankrupt. So now let me review some numbers from our historical tax charts. I got this information from the irs.gov website. It's table 23. Feel free to look this information up yourself. You can see the full history or I can um, share, go over my copy with you. Um, If infinite banking is something you would like to implement for yourself, for your family and would like to connect for a call. So now let me pull up this chart I have here. So starting with 1913, when federal taxes first began, the first tax rate they had was 7% for anybody who earned over $500,000 a year. Now, that was a lot back then, you know, a lot of money. And so people probably were not very concerned. It stayed at that level until 1916, when then the government changed it and it became 15% taxes for anybody who made over $2 million. So now really just the rich people, like people are not concerned probably about this 15%. It's just for the rich people, not the majority of America. And then we have the next year, 1918, where they dropped what they considered to be a high income earner from 2 million down to 1 million. So now, and then they also increased that tax rate from 67% to 77%. And so it stays in the 70s for a while. And then they bounce back and forth some more with who they consider to be the highest income earner and the tax rate that goes along with it. And so the one section, the years that I like to share with people that just is amazing to me and scary is 1944 and 1945. In those years, For anybody who earned over $200,000, their tax rate was 94%. So high. Even those years when Ronald Reagan, he was making movies back then, he said, well, I might as well stop working after I earn $200,000 because after that, 
I'm only making six cents on the dollar. That's what he did back then. So then from there, the tax rate drops a little bit, but continues to stay 80s and 90s all the way to the 60s, where then it drops down to tax rate of 70% and stays in the 70s for a while until the early 80s. And then in the late 80s, the tax rate drops down and then becomes what we're accustomed to seeing in the 30% range, 30 to 40% range. So as you can see, or hear based on this chart, the government kind of just does whatever they want, whenever they want. They change both numbers. They change who they consider to be a high income earner and they change the tax rate for that person and it just for those people. And it just depends on who's in office, what's going on in our world at the time, et cetera. In addition to that Excel spreadsheet, which you can find online, I also do have a handy chart that I'd be happy to go over with you to show it in picture form, just you know, so you can see more visually how ugly those numbers are. So now after getting a solid understanding of our historical tax rates, I'm sure it's starting to become more clear the danger your tax deferred accounts are in. The accounts I'm referring to are your retirement accounts where you receive a tax deduction today in exchange for a supposed lower tax rate when you retire. Because the story has always been that you are likely to be in a lower tax bracket in the future once you retire. Though I can tell you, I have a funny joke with my family, when my father retired, he told me how he had asked his CPA, why are my taxes so high? Don't I get a senior discount or something? Because he was expecting them to go down. What many don't realize is that many write-offs will disappear by the time retirement is achieved. And if assets and investment accounts have been built up well so that you've achieved a successful retirement and you have a good solid income stream coming in, the result for most people would be to remain in a higher tax bracket in their retirement years. Now, of course, I have to let everybody know that I'm not a CPA, and I just want to clarify that any tax-related questions or any in-depth information that you would like, that you would you should speak to your tax advisor. So now, reflecting on what I've talked about so far, if our tax rates can fluctuate at any time, and of course, keeping in mind our history, that we've had much higher tax rates before, This combined with our astronomical deficit, our future unfunded liabilities, and our inability to slow down spending and lower expenses as a nation with our government's current and future need for more money to address all of the many needs of our country and to even simply honor what we've promised to our seniors. Doesn't it seem kind of obvious that our government is going to need more money? And we all know that the government has no way of making money. Therefore, taxation is the only way for our country to increase revenue. And if we are in one of the lowest tax bracket environments historically right now, because we are, it certainly wouldn't be shocking for income taxes to go up. Looking at those charts and everything that I just talked about from the IRS website. So my perspective and that of many friends of mine and colleagues in the industry is that it would be best to pay taxes today when they're on sale rather than in the future when tax rates are totally unknown. And now that we've gone through this reasoning, I want to go into options that are available to you that would allow you to access dollars in your retirement years, income tax-free. Now that we can see the importance, how important it is to be able to access those dollars without tax in those future years. Brings us back to the question, where do you store your cash? So now I'm gonna go over three different buckets of where you could put your savings dollars. The first bucket is the taxable bucket. The second bucket is the tax deferred bucket. And the third bucket is the tax free bucket. In the taxable bucket, you have things like interest that you've earned this year, dividends, if you sell stocks or bonds or mutual funds in that current year and you have gain, you'll have to pay tax in that year. The tax deferred bucket holds things like deferred compensation, annuities, IRAs, and 401ks. So these are the things that are deemed for retirement. And that's the kind of savings vehicles in the tax deferred bucket. But we want to keep in mind with these accounts that you're also locking up these funds into an account that comes with a penalty in some sort of way for all but 12 and a half years of your life. 
Because we all know if you want to tax or cash out some of that money when you're not yet 59 and a half, that there is a penalty for that. And also, if you don't deplete your account at the rate that the government would like you to once you're 72, that there's another penalty and that's a much higher penalty. And second, we just covered that we don't know what your tax rate will be at the time that you retire. So it will be a surprise when you get there and probably not a fun surprise. And as a side note, those tax funds inside of your retirement account, they are also, they're being charged investment and management fees. Well, of course they are. So what that means is you are paying fees on a portion of money that will never belong to you. You're paying fees to the management team or the mutual fund expenses on the government's portion of your retirement account. Because of course there are fees on any investment account and that they must be paid. And how kind of you to pay the fees for the government's share of your account. I'm sure Uncle Sam is very grateful. So if we connect for a call, I'd be happy to go over this a little further. If you would like additional clarity, I could go into that further. But this brings us to our third bucket, the tax-free bucket. And in that, we only have two savings vehicles that you could access in retirement, income tax-free. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with the Roth IRA. That's one of them. And the second one is cash value life insurance. Now, Roth IRAs, they're great. They will be tax-free and they have a lot of good things about them. They also do come with other restrictions. It's restricted how much you can save into a Roth IRA. And also if you're even allowed to, because if your income is too high, you won't even be able to save into a Roth IRA. It won't be an option for you at all. As far as cash value life insurance is concerned, the second item in that bucket, of course, there's other types of life insurance other than whole life. I like to work with whole life. That is what Nelson Nash like to stick to because of the guarantees, because it's a firm, strong product that's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to lapse. There are other types of insurance and a lot of them out there that are popular right now, other than whole life, that you can also access that cash in those policies income tax free. But again, a whole life is really the best vehicle for implementing the infinite banking concept. I have experience working with these other popular life insurance products, um, all sorts of universal life products, and used to own six of these policies myself. What I like about whole life is that it is guaranteed to be in force until age 121, whereas universal life policies have increasing costs inside of them and therefore have the risk of imploding. You don't want to have any of that kind of risk with your banking policy. So that is a whole topic for another day. And I just wanted to touch on it lightly for now. So back to whole life. Just to be clear, there are many more benefits to this life policy and to the infinite banking concept than what I went over today. I've mentioned that you can access your cash without tax in your retirement years, but actually you can have access to your cash tax-free all your life. In the next episode, we will go over the many benefits, additional benefits that come with a whole life policy and why it's the ideal savings tool. Okay, so we went over the three different buckets for where you can store your cash. And now we know that there are only two vehicles that are truly accessible in retirement, income tax-free. I hope this was intriguing information for you and that you'll tune in again next week when I get into all the benefits of the ideal savings tool. As always, Please reach out if you would like to connect. If you have read Nelson Nash's book, Becoming Your Own Banker, and have questions and would like to review what you've read, I would be happy to review that with you. That's one of my favorite things to do. My email is valerie at alphaomegawealth.com. May you have an enjoyable and wonderful week. Take care. This is the podcastfactory.com.